Facebook. Okay, yeah. So just so you know, it's on there, and I'm putting it on the telephoto. Can you look at why it came up here? Oh, infamous. Okay. Oh. I did this. Is it working? Oh, nope, you're live. Okay, cool. You're live on your page. It is working? Yep. Okay, perfect. Okay, wait, let me make sure it's public though because edit audience. Oh, yes, Walter. Thank you, God. Great news is I can't even see as far as the monitor. <laughs> uh huh. I can't even see as far as the monitor. Really? Oh, you wear glasses. Yeah. Oh my god. Let's see if I work for it. Oh my. Oh. Oh, so you want? So you're live right now, just so you know. Oh yeah. Can we stop it and just start over? I don't know. What do you mean? Like it, it might cancel out the whole stream yard. I don't know. Oh, you think so? Oh. I don't know. Oh, how is it like? How was that? Good. Wow, now you look like Julia Childs back there. I'm feeling like Julia Childs. <laughs> People are going to see you anyways. At least we know. <laughs> Just going to watch yourself then, mister. My question that I want to know is... Jeez, these things are bright as hell. Jesus. Hope you're not subconscious. <laughs> Are you? No, you don't seem to be. Okay. So is it working? <laughs> yeah, we're live. Okay. Woo! Let me have my um. Squeeze my. Yeah, you're live on your my, Instagram. I'm gonna put my over here. Hmm. Perfect. Let's see. I'm gonna, I don't know how. Okay, let's just try it. All right. And we're good here? 
Yeah, we're live. Okay, we're cool. Rolling. Look at this. Okay. Hey, wait, can you see me? Where am I at? I am there. <laughs> this is what happens is I'm eating for 21 days. What and this is all I've heard about for the last three weeks is how skinny Walter is. <laughs> I love it. I love, I love being skinny. Yes. I, was I just want to say it's not just women, clearly. <laughs> I was, hey, I love myself. Like, okay. Women second. I mean, <laughs> that should be, well, my kids, women, you can love them at the same time. Anyway, so we got, we finally figured out our audio, our video. We're finally live. This is my homegirl, Natalie. She's like totally saving my life right now. We weren't going to do food on As The Money Talks. Those of you on the podcast won't be able to see it unless you're on Spotify. So you should be there. Spotify cut me a check. I have my notes. <laughs> Today, As The Money Talks, we're going to go over how to use your car to build wealth, number one. Two how to use your car loan to buy real estate. Something that I've actually done, I'm gonna take these off, that's whack. Um, <laughs> something that I've actually done more than once. So I'm gonna go over and I'm gonna share um, some of the things that I've done to build wealth. And then today I'll also go over how to speed up your so-called retirement. So let's say you wanna retire faster. You know, they say 20, 30 years you save and you save and you get old and decrepit and then you can retire one day. I'm gonna show you how to retire in three to five years. I don't care where you are, how old you are. I'm gonna show you how to retire in three to five years. At least get to a point where you can live comfortably. Can we talk about what retirement is? Right in now? Texas, no. Let's um, talk about what retirement is, because so, I think a lot of times people don't understand you know what, what and, you mean when you say that. Now you thank you for that. I can't believe I missed it. So retirement is when you get to the point where you have control of your time. So you don't need. $10,000 a month to retire, you may be able to retire on $3,000 a month. Actually, the average person that does retire doesn't have $3,000 a month. You know, if you're a married couple and you guys didn't save, which is 97% of the people didn't save enough, you end up living on $2,500, $3,000. $3, so I'm going to show you today how to get to the point where you have control of your time or if you want to work, it's optional. So, and in the meantime, while I talk, I'm going to make, we are going to make pizzas. So today, this is 100% plant-based. Not that I'm all about that, because plants are cool. I love meat too. Um, so this is a plant-based pizza, right? The crazy thing, let's see. I just, is it bad? I wanted to see how many carbs. Oh, I wanted to see how many oh, carbs. Oh, don't look at here. the carbs. I mean, it's all vegetables. These are chickpeas. So it has like one gram of sugar, right, which is really 22 good. 22 carbs and three grams of fiber. Right, so, so it'd be 19 carbs, and it's for a fourth of the pizza. Yeah, well, and well, that sucks. You can see how it's, it's like a um, mini pizza. You're getting your carbs today, but here's a good thing. These are made, they're, they're vegetable-based, plant-based, right? Well, grains of plants, too. I don't do, I don't do grains, um, breads, grains. I try not to mess with that at all. So here is, so this is going to be all vegetables except for this block of mozzarella cheese that I insist on eating for myself. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to do one with the cow's milk cheese, right? It's filled. It's actually mozzarella. And I'm going to do one with this fake, actually, this vegan cheese um, is actually really, really good. I got it, it from- It looks good. I didn't know that that was a vegan cheese. I was wondering, yeah. actually, it looks really good. Yeah, I got it from Whole Foods. Is it made um, from tofu? Um, no, no, I have no idea. I, I, I don't believe it's soy. I have to double check. Cashew too. Um, maybe something like that. I don't really do soy either, so I try and keep it, you know, like a real plant, plant based. So it actually tastes pretty good. I made these last night at midnight for um, two of my friends talk about. So we actually, this is round two. So first, what I'd like to do is I'm going to go into my notes. So I'm going to talk about, and then those of you that get to see this later on YouTube will get to see more of the graphics. So today, let's pretend, and I've actually done what I'm getting ready to tell you, so I'm going to walk through it. So let's say I'm in a position where I want to buy a car, but I also want to buy real estate. Because a lot of times when you buy a car, before you buy a piece of real estate, it will, jack, it will raise your debt to income ratio so your bills are too high based on your income. So a lot of people get thrown out, right? And then the other thing too is people... Some people have to decide between a car payment or making a down payment on a house. So today, tonight, wherever you are, I'm going to show you how to do both at the same time. All right. Right? So I'm going to use my Audi S5. 
Um, I bought a 2011 Audi S5. I paid nine grand for it. It was a hell of a deal. So some of the strategy will entail finding a good deal, be it through an auto auction, a crackhead, a smoker, somebody selling their car, like super, super cheap, whatever it is. So um, what's considered a good deal? Because the other thing that makes me nervous about that too is, and I do like paying cash for cars and not having a payment. And I, I do feel like I've always gotten a better okay. deal. But... Um, my question is, you know, my concern is always transmission goes out. That's a couple thousand dollars, right? To fix mm -hmm. that or, or whatever. So sometimes you can think you're getting a good deal, but maybe not necessarily. So what would be considered a good deal? Does there have to be a certain um, amount of like equity? In yes. Or so it's value. So for instance, my S5, which is something that I've wanted for a long time, the V8 and they went to the V6, which is horrible. So I wanted a V8 and they make this in 2011. Right. So I got it with low miles. It had 90,000 miles. So that's another thing, too. When you're looking at a car, you want to make sure that it's in good shape. Take a mechanic, have them go through it, have them check everything. So a good deal to me is getting at least 30, 40, 50 percent on the car, on the, off of the value of it. So, for instance, my Audi was worth sixteen thousand dollars, sixteen five. I bought it for nine. So the crazy part is before I bought the Audi, I called my bank, maybe federal. And I gave him the VIN number. I didn't even have the car in my possession. It was still sitting somewhere on a little, like on this auction lot. How did you get the value of the car? Blue Book first, that they tell you the value? So I went to Kelly Blue Book, which you can do, right? You can go to Facebook Marketplace Offer Up, and you can, Facebook will actually tell you if you input the car like you're selling it, tell you what it's worth. Or you can go on Facebook and Offer Up and see what people are selling them for. So, but I did all those, and then I called Navy Federal and said, what is this car worth? They go 16,005. I said, what will you give loan me against it? The lady goes, I will give you $21,000. She goes, how much money would you like? Okay, can I stop you again? Yes. I like the how much money you like part though. <laughs> um, so my next question is, um, what did your credit score need to be to qualify for that? Um, your credit score, really, you can buy a car with a 620, a 580. Some people, I mean, not maybe federal, but some people will let you buy cars um, with even marginal credit. But with Navy Federal, you gotta, I'd say you have to be somewhere at least in the mid sixes. Okay. I think when I did it, my score was seven something. But well, your credit score changes depending on if it's a mortgage person, a car person, you know, karma, credit karma, they're, all the scores are different, right? But you need to have a pretty decent credit score. Okay. So you need to pay your bills on time, make sure that you have multiple credit cards, at least three or four, right? So if I don't have any credit cards, I can say, Natalie, can you put me on yours? And then I will inherit her credit, assuming it's good credit. And I will be, uh, I'll have that on my credit, which will build my credit. So there's a lot of things you could do, but you wanna have good credit. And there's enough videos on YouTube to make sure that you build your credit, right? So you wanna have good credit and protect your credit at all costs because you could get rich and build wealth with just using credit, having no money. Another video, right? So I have this Audi, and it, I, so they cut me a check for $21,000 without me even having the car yet. Nice. This is a good thing about having a good relationship with your bank. Okay. Right? Yes. They're selling it for nine. I, I got it for nine, which was and a steal. And it's worth 16, and they're loaning you 21. Correct, so what happens when you buy a car, they will give you 125% of the value of the car. So when you go to these iron car lots where you get burned, where you go to Pookie and Neil Motors, and you have a car, let's say it's upside down by five grand, but you're buying a car that's 15, or let's say you're buying a car that's 20, right? And let it's, let's just say it's worth 20. The bank will give them 125%. So they will give them 25 grand the bank, and they can use that five grand to take care of your upside down balance. So that's why when you trade in a car that you open you upside down on, that's how they do it. And then they turn around, they take it to auction. So let's say they trade it in and you they get six from you. They give you six for the value. It will be on the lot somewhere for 10 or in auction for seven or eight. And that's how they make money. So by going to my credit union, I got the 20 grand. Then I flipped it a couple of times because there was no, they didn't tell me like how long I needed to take the purchase of the vehicle. So I flipped the money a couple of times. Then I went and so I they, bought the car. Do you have a certain amount of time that you have to buy the car? Or? So here's how it works. With these type of loans, they give you 90 days to give them the pink slip or the title to the car. If you don't 
give it to them in 90 days, what they will do is then send you a threatening letter saying, hey, it's been 90 days. Hey, this is letter number two. This is letter number three. So now it's been 180 days. And then they will say, we're going to take your interest rate from 7% to 17, 18. You will get a consumer rate. So then you need to make the decision, okay, so do I keep the title and take the 18% rate on this 20 grand, right? So what's 18% of 20,000 bucks? It's for almost 4,000. $3,600. Can I take 20,000 in one year and make $3,600 on it? Oh yeah. Oh, to the day, right? I can take 20 grand and make 20 grand. I can make 100% on it. So to me, I thought it would make sense to- You can to... even lock it up in a CD and still do that. Well, the CD I would get whacked, but I hear it unless it's one of those- Well, I'm just saying 18 FTX. Months, 18 months, 3%, you got your money back. One of, one of those FTX <laughs> CDs, you might get that much interest or okay. nothing at all. So if you could take that money and make and make moves with it, then it may, may make sense to take the personal loan and take that unsecured loan because you still have the car and the title. So what I did is I have, um, it's some gangster stuff, but it's totally legal. I have, I still have the title to my Audi S5, the one that's parked right outside. So I have the title for it. It's in my name. Now my bank is, they requested that if I didn't give them the title, they were going to raise my rate, which they did. But they said the minute I give them the title, they will lower my rate back. So for me, I'm just thinking, am I making money with this money? Is it still making sense to me? If I can make 100% on the 20,000, but give them 18% a year, I'm still making, what is that, 82%, no, 80, 80, I'm still making 82% on the deal. So this is how we do it, like Diamond, Jamie Diamond from Chase. If I can borrow money from you at 1% and then go make 10% on it, I keep the nine, no money out of pocket. I never need to pay you back. And that's how finance works. That's how people get rich in finance, right? So that's one way to go about it. That's with the Audi. But the Range Rover, I did the same thing. The Range Rover that's on my board. So wait, can I rewind you though? Yes, and I'm gonna start making this pizza. This is some. Because you know, I like I like numbers and money. <laughs> yes, this is just a tomato sauce. You can make your own, like I did tonight. I'm playing. <laughs> I made my <laughs> I made my way to aisle number seven. I don't normally eat stuff in the can, but today I was just in a hurry. Normally I would do oh, tomatoes, I garlic. Sauce. <laughs> I can't do cans. I can't do cans. <laughs> So this okay. is just, oh, go ahead, what's your, what's your money? So my question is this, okay, so we take the 18%, which was how much money do we spend? $3,600 that you'd be paying in interest. For the year, for on the 20000 So um, that would be your interest plus your payment, right? So if that 3600 is for the year, that itself is 300 a month plus your payment. What's your payment on it? 400 Well, so I don't count the, the principal payment because that I got to pay back anyways. When, when I'm doing this in my mind, I'm thinking about the actual, what it's costing me. Because the principal, I'm just giving back. But the interest is what I'm what I'm actually giving to the bank. So when I look at these, I don't look at the payment. What I look at is what am I making money on the deal, right? Okay. So I think my payment's like 300 bucks or something like that. But for well, 300... Well, even still, that's only $600 total. Yeah, so if, let's say I'm paying $300, but I'm making 1000 a month on it. I still am making money and um, clear. No, no money out of my pocket. I didn't give them a penny. They don't even know where I live. Basically they do. They got my address, <laughs> right? So that's number one. So you can do it with a cheap car like the Audi, right? So if I wanted to sell that Audi right now, I could, but I'm still going to owe my, my bank money on a secure, on an unsecured loan. Right. But I could do that. And that's something like if I ran a bank, if I'm thinking like Goldman Sachs and these guys, that's what I'm doing. And that's what they do. You that put money in the bank. Do. They you get a dollar, you put a dollar in the bank and they loan out Wait, eight, nine. They don't put it in the back with my name on it, Walter. Stop it. No, they, I'm they, they put your name they, on it they, with a they sucker. Rob the bank. What do they rob? Did they they do take cash? So when banks get robbed, they really get hit because then they're losing all that leverage on that. That's why banks don't like to deal with people that are shitty account holders, because if you're the type of put money person to put money in the bank and pull it out, they're not able to keep that, keep the spread. So they got to go to the overnight window, money market funds, and they have to go borrow that money from another bank. So Wells Fargo might say, hey, Wells Fargo, we need to go through the window, blah, 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 the Federal Reserve, and we need to cover our reserves, right? But then we so got, for every $6 I have in the bank, they're loaning out five for interest. 
No, for every dollar you have in the bank, they're loaning out eight or nine. It's gangster leverage. If me and you did that, we would be in prison. <laughs> like locked up, no back, okay, no soap, maybe. Or maybe you would have a lot of soap. You'd have a lot of time. You'd be really clean. <laughs> right? So this is just a basic tomato sauce. Like I said, I don't really do cans, but like I was in a hurry. And so um, and the cool part about this, you know, these are, I think I paid like four bucks for these, both of these shells. They're cauliflower, no grains, no bread, none of that crap, right? So that was pretty basic. Me, I like a lot of sauce. So I don't know about you. To that, you like a lot of sauce. That's yes, right. Right, so that's the sauce is out of the way. And then comes the sticky part is the cheese. Which cheese would you like? Do you like one lump or two? I was a Bugs Bunny fan, sorry. I, think I was, was like Bugs two. <laughs> what was that Bugs Bunny? So I'm washing my hands, you maniacs, right? So now I'm going to, on the left side, the Dutch you the left side just popped into my mind. I'm going to take this cheese and I'm just gonna throw it on. So, and I like watching these videos on YouTube where they just like chunk it on. And it will, it's, it, it is mozzarella, it will melt. And this is easy. This would be, this is something you could do for like couples or your kids or like anybody. It's a cool, like last night, um, I made these for my friends after we went saw these Christmas lights for 45 bucks, like four minutes of like Christmas lights. Oh my gosh. We went twice. We went back again. Then we I didn't even pay for it. I saw the video. I didn't pay for it. My friends paid for uh. it. They came and picked me up. So I was like, yeah, I'll go. I'll see Christmas lights, whatever. But no, but we should have did the coupon. But still, we went, we drove around twice. So it was like, okay, we got a 22 bucks. It's, three inflation, bucks. it's like $7 a piece. So technically we only paid for $7 each, each time we went. And then we went slower the last time. So that's mozzarella cheese that will melt all over the place, right? And then for the, for the fake or well, the vegan cheese, this is actually easier because- Can it, I taste it? Yes, please. It's actually pretty good. I mean, this is, I am not a chef. So uh, this is just- Kind of smells like a Parmesan. Yeah, it smells a little, it smells like that um, cheese you had, you know, you when you, I, you know, I had block cheese as a kid for a little bit. You know, my parents were middle class. We had a little block cheese. It smells like that. Or like the cheese cheese like you buy in the store, like that. Um, Cream oh, cheese? That craft, like the yellow. Oh, Velveeta. The yellow. <laughs> it like, does a little bit. That horrible cheese. But it does taste better. So that we don't have to worry about. And then this. You can just put all over the place. And I'm... Tonight I'm gonna to do like the or basil rosemary type more of a margarita pizza, so it's not gonna have cheese all over the place. So boom, so that's it for the cheese, and then from there you just pick your toppings, which I will do. But while I'm on the subject, so we talked about the Audi, right? That's a, a cheap car you can do that with, right? And you, it's done. Anybody can do it. Decent credit, decent income. And here's the other thing you do when you are applying for loans. Whoever you talk to, give them the same number. I tell every bank, every time I borrow money, I make the same amount. Per month, per year, if I apply to 20 banks over a year, I give them all the same exact number. So when they run my credit or they look at other apps, you know how Joe Biden, how they do it, they do, they know everything about you. They go, oh yeah, he said he made, you know, blah, blah, blah. And he's still saying that, so chances are he really makes that. Oh, he's got a good memory <laughs> or he's got it written down, yeah. whatever. Right? So I will do, so make sure you do that. So what happens is when I went back, actually I did this first when I bought the Range Rover, which is something that I've wanted forever, but I'm not the type of person to spend a hundred thousand dollars on a truck. It's just, I'm not going to do it. Not until, you know, I'm worth five, 10 million. I might spend a hundred grand, but that's just me where I'm at maturely. I'm not going to like go out and blow money like that. So I found this Range Rover after looking and the guy wanted 30,000 bucks. And so I was like, all right. So I called Navy Federal. It was sitting there all pretty shiny. I called them, gave them the VIN number, and they said, oh, it's worth 45,000 bucks. But the car also was worth 45,000. And my favorite question is, how much money can I, will you loan me? Or how much money can I get? So they said, we'll give you 56,000. And the lady was like, how much money do you want? I said, 56,000. 
They gave me 56. I gave the guy 30. I had $26,000 left minus my registration fees. And that's between you and the seller, what you put on paper. That's totally up to you. Right? So then I bought the car for 30. The bank gave me 56. 56 minus 30 is 26 in my pocket. Right? So 26 from the Range Rover. And then from the Audi, because the bank gave me 21 and I bought it for nine, I had 11. Right? So I had 11 and then I had 26,000. Right. So that's step number one. Right. So now I have this cash sitting there and I have two cars that are sitting outside that I can drive. Now, just several ways that I make money with these vehicles. So with the Range Rover, it's on Toro. If you go and you look up, I'm going to Ontario, you look up, you know, Range Rover, you will find the Range Rover for two hundred dollars a night on Toro. So the Range Rover brings in two hundred dollars a day then Turo takes their fees. So let's say I rent this thing out for six days, right? So that's $1,200. Turo will take their money. I'll be left with a thousand. Roughly, it depends on the car. This is, I don't know how they figure it out, but they always seem to come out on top, right? So I end up with a thousand dollars from renting my car out six days a month. I still have 24 days left with my Range Rover. So I, do, I bring in a thousand dollars for the month my car payment seven, eight, nine, let's just say it was even a thousand. I'm break even. Right. Right. Not my car payment's not a thousand dollars, but let's say it was, I'm driving a Range Rover for free, except I have $26,000 in my pocket. So I'm driving a Range Rover for free. I actually, we make a little bit of money on Toro. And then now what do I do with 26 grand? Minus my fees. Let's just say I'm going to use, I'm going to put, pay the fees, the DMV, Joe Biden, and then and put some away. And I'm going to, I'm going to use 20,000. And I'm going to stare at it. I'm going to the precious, right? So now what do I do with the 20,000 bucks? That is where you can build wealth. If you go, let's say you were going to buy a house and I have my notes. Here so today my, we're talking about using the purchase of your car to buy real estate and create wealth. That is what we're talking about. I know, Sean, you had put that in the chat, so I wanted to make sure that um, we clarified that. So if you're just joining us, we are talking about using your car purchase to buy real estate and create wealth. Somebody who's later than us? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Actually, Sean Bradford, I think, was his uh, name. That's my homie, Steady B. We just actually, we've had to figure out the glitch, but we got it. So with the, so now I have my beautiful notes. That's the, I love being organized. So with the Turo, I get $1,000 a month coming through the door. So I'm in a free Range Rover. I don't let too many people touch the Audi. It's, it's a love story. I try not to share. And people rip the grill off of it every time they hit one of those door bumpers. But the Audi is sexy on Turo. So I'm still kind of floating with putting it on Turo. But that is $1,000 a month. So I have a free Range Rover sitting outside, which is some gangster stuff. Because now I'm not sweating over a payment. That money's coming into my household, right? So now what's the next thing? What do I do with this cash? Like, what do I do? What I did is I used I think it. you should put it in the bank. <laughs> uh, just kidding. So I'm like just a loan it out a bunch of times. I use it to buy real estate, right? So let's say, let's take the Audi, right? The Audi is 11,000 bucks. So let's say I take 10 of that at 5% down, because you can put 5% down on the house. And the crazy part is with these high interest rates and the market crumbling, thank God, hallelujah, it's about time. People are now more flexible. Like a year ago, if I said, hey, I want closing costs, they'd be like, kiss my ass to the right, to the left, and side to side. Right. Now I'm like, I would like clothing costs. Your dog is really cute. I'll take him or her. <laughs> you put her in the car. You know what I'm saying? I want that TV. I mean, you can literally, like my buddy Paul and Miriam, you know, Paul and Miriam, they gave me these. He'd be like, you know what? I want these. You know, like you can ask for all kinds of stuff. You can take over mortgages where let's say you're making a mortgage and you want out and you need to move. Or let's say, I don't know, you and your husband are moving to Taiwan or whatever. I could take over your mortgage assuming it's two months over and then pay the notes at your current interest rate. Or I could take my 5% down, put down on a $200,000 house. And so I buy the house for two hundred. They pay my $10,000 down. And I have a $190,000 mortgage. 
Right? So imagine this $190,000 mortgage, which you could do when you leave California, New York. My God, you could like 200 grand in some states, you could buy four houses, a fourplex, a duplex. So you do that. So you go and then you buy the property. A mortgage at 4%, I know it's fantasy right now, just stick with me. A mortgage at 4% is $900 on 190,000. 900 bucks, it's a car payment in California. Yeah. And taxes and, and, and um, insurance, depending on what state you live in, because Texas has like a 2% um, property tax. Gotcha. So, but depending on where you are, you're looking at a percent, um, and then you're looking at um, insurance. So you're looking at total somewhere around $1,100 to own this house, right? So, it, and then at 6%, then your interest rate, you're paying 1100 a month. So you're looking at about 1300 bucks at 6%. With the rates float between six and seven right now. But if you buy the property right now, the right way, when interest rates come down, because you beat the seller up so bad and the rates come down, you will be in a better deal. And that's rich strategy 101, right? So now I have, and let me keep going here. What would you like, Natalie, first on it? You surprised me. Ha, I want the creme de la creme, the, the creme Walter Especial. Okay, cool. <laughs> How about I try not to cut my fingers off? <laughs> yeah. Actually, let me start over. <laughs> yes, please. So, this. yeah, there we go. So, I'm going to do tomatoes. I actually bought a bunch. I have several of these slices on Amazon, but like, that's why I'm going to leave that right there. Because, like, they're so sharp. Do you realize the number one hospital visit for restaurants is? Mandolin oh, slices, for sure. Crazy, yeah. Ow! And I've done it to myself. Just the tip. Matter of fact, this glove down here, I use. I was gonna say. Look at that. That's my mandolin glove right there. That's it's funny. Like Miss Piggy. They actually have real ones that you can't cut through for that. Really? I know. I just. I mean, I'm trying to listen. I'm you learning. order really well Amazon. There you go, <laughs> Mark. You got all my account information at this point. So I can slice this. So we have plenty of tomatoes. Right. Bam. I love this thing. I have several of these, but this we moved about this at Target. Target. It's like a few bucks and it slides. You can do different slices for like sweet potato chips or tomatoes, or I mean, you can get out with this thing, right? So done. Okay. Now, so let's we'll do tomatoes. So while we're doing the tomatoes, what now that we have and we're talking about the Audi still, so we have eleven thousand, ten thousand bucks. We have the house now, 190. What do we do with this house? Number one, two, where does the house go? Now, I'm the I'm of the camp, and so is Grant Cardone and a lot of really smart people in real estate. I am not buying a house of residence until I get my investment portfolio up. Right? So the house we're in right now, I rent, right? And it's like I pay like two grand for like this, this, I don't know. Yeah, house, probably be 3500 Easily, 3500 yeah. And my landlord's consistent. Like, yeah. yo, I said, listen, man, I, I got, it's, it's, it's ink. You can't do nothing about it, yeah. right? This house, I think, is worth 700 grand, where it was going for 770 I noticed that was a year ago. Right now, they're selling these houses in the sixes. Not even 12 months from 770 to in the sixes. So the guy that bought the house at 77, 770 is down at hundred grand. And that's asking price, not closing costs. And I want the cat and the salt and pepper shakers. They're, it's, it's a wrap for them. So even if I would have bought this house at $500,000, my mortgage would still be much higher than I'm paying in rent. So the money that I'd be paying toward the mortgage, I save and I put like, you can put it in E-Trade or you can put it in all kinds of places, save it for the next purchase, make moves, start a clothing line like verbal herb or lit dot one L Y T dot one. Right. Throw my oh, own I was going to wear it. I forgot. I was going to put on one of your shirts. My tonight. verbal herb shirt. <laughs> yeah, go to verbal herb, get you a shirt. <laughs> now that gives the shirt off his back. Shall be naked. So anyways, um, so we've got this house. It's $200,000. So me, I'm putting that house in Texas near water, near a theme park, hospital, um, uh, uh, national park, like Joshua tree. They have, Joshua Tree, everybody was buying properties. They are scurrying out of there so fast. So you can buy stuff at a reasonable price. Um, so you can build a house out there. And when the market turns around, you have this house built, low interest rates, and you're in the game, baby. But most people are running for the hills. When people run for the hills, you go down the hill and go pick up the money, right? So now we have this $200,000 house and we have some yellow bell peppers. 
Are you okay with that? Yeah. So now we have this 200, where do we put it? Me, I'm in Houston. I'm in Tennessee. I'm in Florida, Alabama, Gulf Shores, the number one Airbnb resort town in the country. Now, some of you think Alabama, Bama, like I'm not going to Bama, but like <laughs> they said that about Willis, Texas, I shouldn't go. No black man well, is safe. That makes me think because your friend who was here last night was Alabama, and I wanted, I was dying to know what Alabama was like. <laughs> yeah, my friend, he's like in the dictionary. If you look him up for white dude, there's a picture of him. <laughs> but I met his parents. They're, they're, they're the coolest people. They're like the coolest people I've ever met. And they're from Bama, so that's whole stereotype thing. You got to put some of that stuff to the side. So I'm taking my $200,000, and I'm going to a lake in Alabama or a river. So you have your house sitting. People can sit there with the jacuzzi. I bought my jacuzzi for 600 bucks from Intex. So a jacuzzi, a little fire pit, and they can stare at the river, put some lawn chairs out there, fishing poles. For 200 grand in Alabama, you are getting, I mean, it's not going to be a giant house, but it will be a structure that you can rent out for 200 bucks a night. So I got my $200,000 house. It's never parked. It's somewhere desirable. And let's say I put it on Airbnb for 150 bucks a night times 15 nights is $2,250. My mortgage, when the interest rates and Joe Biden and them, Joe retires and the, everybody gets into the game, I'm just kidding. Joe ain't going to retire. <laughs> but let's see, he probably going to die. <laughs> die like, hey, my dear folks. <laughs> but, but that... So when the rates come out, let's say we get to 4%. Because I think 2% is far-fetched. Three, that's a prayer. Let's say we get back to four. You're paying $1,100 for a house, and you're bringing in $2,250 from Airbnb. So one, you have the $1,000 a month left over from Airbnb. Two, you get to use it, right? So your friends can use it. So like my house in Texas, I'll rent out to friends really, really cheap, like 99 bucks a night or something like that. And the crazy party sometimes when they go they want me to go with them to show them around I'm like cool <laughs> i'll take okay i don't get the master i get like the third bedroom with the bunk beds, whatever <laughs> i get to go you know it's cool they buy me dinner it's a cool experience so i get to use it and i'm making money from it and i get to use it and i'm building equity because when the market turns around i have this house it's done data well, what so, I like about everything that you've shared so far, too, is that it's really been about assets that are paying for your lifestyle or paying for themselves. Oh, yeah. I'm putting spinach. Are you cool with that? And I know I should have put the spinach on earlier. I totally screwed this up. But it bees like that. Let's see. So now, how about... Ooh, what up, Greg? How about that? <laughs> yeah, I can't see any of those people. Oh, yeah. The comment section isn't working. Sorry. <laughs> Hey, we better, far would be good. I respond to everybody. We better got this stuff to work. <laughs> right? So now I'm hey, we're killing the day. You okay with capers? Yes. So these are capers. Capers, these are disease fighting. Matter of fact, almost everything on this pizza fights some sort of illness. Like capers, cruciferous vegetables, spinach. Um, I, I was gonna throw cauliflower on there. Tomatoes, tomatoes you don't eat raw. Like what happens when you eat a raw tomato? You get 20%, I believe it's the lycopene in the tomato. When you cook it, heat it, you get 80% absorption of the, the, the disease-fighting chemical in it. That's why Italians, they will cook tomatoes. Like, I'll make tomato soup on a regular basis. I probably eat tomato soup two, three times a week easily. And this is my second time in two days having cooked tomatoes in a pizza. So cook your tomatoes. We'll do like the Italians. Now, so I've got spinach. Um, bell peppers, I've got capers, I've got cheese on it. Oh my God, I've got the sauce. So, but let's keep it moving, right? I like to keep going. I have a very addictive personality. So garlic, which is really good for you. Garlic will fight. It is one of the, num this and turmeric are one of the number one and two fighters of cancer. Like if you don't, if you starve yourself and you just eat turmeric and garlic, it will literally, it just zaps, zaps. It just kills disease. Incredible. So I eat garlic almost every day. I have they're anti-inflammatories, I think, right? Is that inflammatory? There's allicin and garlic. So what happens? What you do is you what you do is you let it, you chop it up and you let it sit for 15 minutes. And that's when everything, all the um everything, the, the chemical that fights cancer or disease, that's when it shows up after 15 minutes. So with garlic, and we should have did this first. I'm not perfect. Contrary to popular belief. 
Oh, I'm plugging this so I don't cut myself. So, Alexa, set timer for 15 minutes. She's so obedient. Can you do, Alexa, put on some of that gangster rap like they do in, uh, what's that with you with John Travolta and Samuel Jackson? Alexa, play white people gangster rap. <laughs> <laughs> it's Alexa? No. Black people, we don't ask for shit like that because gangster rap shows up and the gangsters show up. <laughs> Yeah, you know, talking about that with Samuel L. Jackson's like Alexa, oh, yeah. some of that gangster. Oh, oh, I didn't see that movie, but I do believe you. I can see him cussing out Alexa with his afro. Jeez Louise. So the garlic is here now. So what I'm not gonna do is I'm I'm gonna put the garlic on after I pull the pizza out. Okay. Now, or you could do it like halfway because this stuff is strong. Like I, what I do is I take this and I put like on crackers or something. And I'll put like an avocado or guacamole and I'll mix this up with pomegranates, lemon, salt, pepper. Oh man. Whew, it's off the hook. I'm getting hungry just thinking about it. Right. And I put gar and I eat a lot of garlic. Um, along with green tea. I just my whole regimen. It's like black seed oils have all these things that I do every day to help, you know, just stay healthy, stay alive. So not that eating this and is just, healthy. And just a reminder if you're just tuning in, it's because why? Oh, or are you being more aware? <laughs> I'm being aware because I want to live. Yeah. <laughs> I want to be skinnier. You're Actually, skinnier. I was fighting an illness and I know I am winning, which is cool. So this definitely helps. And garlic is good for you, right? And it will keep the vampires out. Those of you that like those kind of people. <laughs> turmeric, I, I put, okay, I'll just put it on one in case you don't like it. All right. So turmeric is good with pepper. Pepper helps absorb turmeric, right? So I hit with pepper, right? And pepper is the amazing on pizzas, right? A little, I'll do a little salt because it's probably enough. Well, actually, you know, there's no salt on this pizza because it's all vegetables, right? Bam, I love these salt shakers, right? So what else? My God, like, oh, the basil. Right now, sage. I normally use scissor sage. Yeah. Why well, it looks like sage? Thank you for saying that. We're pretending sage, but it's actually not. I used all the sage this last is night. Sage. Is it? Oh yeah. Okay. Then what am I? What am I smoking? Maybe I got them twisted or confused. Yeah, you used the basil last night. Oh, did I really? Oh, we're so gonna sage your house. <laughs> oh, that's not gonna help. You can sage, shake, wiggle, and and the spirits are up in here. For no, I'm just kidding. Actually, there's no spirits in here. Not spirits like that. So. This pizza actually is pretty, there's a lot going on. I mean, if you want, I mean, you could do, and I always tell my kids, do not cut against your hand. And then, but you should do what you say, right? Yeah. So these, what I would normally do is I would just throw a few of them on after the pizza is cooking. I like to eat avocados raw and I haven't heard anything to the contrary. So I, I eat them raw. So those are there. And when we're done, we can just slice them up. The garlic, give that 15 minutes, and then I will put it on it. And I'm trying to think, I mean, we've, we've done everything. Oh, we've done everything. I know Natalie, you don't really drink, but like, there's nothing with pretending. Actually, since I, since I did my 15 day fast, my taste for alcohol and desire has almost disappeared, which is insane. Mm. And you know I me, mean? I used to drink, well, I'm gonna say every day, but not every day, but I used to drink every day. Mm, but good. now it's like, it is good, right? This is a store. This is actually is a store wine from Target, right? My French wine. I, Dark horse. I, this I have to like save for like obvious reasons. I don't want to get killed, murdered, I'm drinking them all. So, but yeah, now to spin, let me go ahead and throw these in, right? So I want to be all professional in them. I finally get to use this. <laughs> all right, so my oven's been preheated at 400 degrees. Bam. Actually, you know what? I'm going to put you down there. Woo! Right? And then there. So those will cook for 10 minutes. Right? And then when they come out, because Alexa, we have how many minutes left? We have 10 minutes left. 10 minutes in there. So this is going to work out perfect. The pizza will come out hot. I'll throw the garlic on top, the avocados. And we'll be done with that. So we have 10 more minutes left on this. What I'd like to do is go a little more in detail, right? So can I, can I ask another question? No, go for it. Ask as many questions as you want. Because again, I like to go back to numbers. 
Um, How did I lose so much weight? Why am I so yeah, thin? Geez. My right. God, I know. I'm, like, I'm just hanging out with one of my girlfriends tonight, talking about how skinny. Hey, hey. <laughs> yeah. hey, man, we're tired. Yeah, I need no, for 21 it's okay. days. I was just on you. Plus, I had I'm the eight. if I was 200 pounds in April to 155, so yeah. I can Pretty shop good. with the Ethiopians and the Italians finally. You there know you what go. I'm saying? Like, <laughs> I'll, I'll take off the mannequin. It's too little now. I can fit it. Trust me. But no, that's the other thing too. While we're at it, the reason I started really getting into this was because of health. Like if I go, let's say we go to Domino's tonight, it's all going to be processed. They're going to use bread on their dough, right? All the, the, not whole grains, but just the grains. So instead of the whole grain, they separate it. So you get the shitty grain. And, and chemicals, I'm sure. The chemicals, the, the cheese. Oops, uh-oh. <laughs> I worked at McDonald's. We had a whole regiment. I ain't going to admit to that. Yeah, I don't know what the statute of limitations is on fast food workers. Okay. <laughs> but I have this story um, in one of the books that I'm working on. It's called Nigger Rich, but it's a whole, like, it's a financial story. But I'm like, don't be the drive through jerk. Don't be that dude. Especially with a bunch Seriously. of children working who are making three thirty five an hour. Please. Oh, man. Let me get me started with that. That's easy. Sam always has complex orders. You know, he's very picky when he eats. He's uh, always like, watch your tone of voice at the drive-thru. Yeah. <laughs> if they screw my order up, I just keep it. I never send food back. I'm like, you know what? And if I'm going to, let's say I order a steak or something that's it's just not right, I'll say, you know what? I love this steak. It is amazing. But what I'd like to do is take it home. So can you cook it a little bit more so it can sit in the car for a few hours? So they're like, okay, look, just to go. Can you heat it up so they can take it? It's not like, oh, you screwed up, Benzino, or whatever your name is, Barclay, in the kitchen, Ratatouille. So that- well, I will tell you that I did spend a long time in the restaurant industry. Really? Yeah, I mean, I started at 13. Well, yeah, I was in the restaurant industry for a long time. And, um, I never saw anybody mess with anybody's food, just so you know. Well, you're a little bit younger than I am, or a lot younger than I am, actually. No. Yes, I am. I'm six years younger than you. I'm 53. I'm 46. Okay. I'll be 47. Uh, okay, so six years is a lot to a woman. I think it is. Let's do a poll. How many women? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, but the thing is, how many people and do you think Congratulations are for being brave enough to say how old you are. <laughs> I was lying. I meant to say 36. <laughs> 36? <laughs> You're old. Ancient, Walter. Ancient. But okay, but one thing I, I do want to go back to is let's look at the numbers again because people aren't able to see things visually. So let's look at um, your total out of pocket on your car is, let's say it's 1000 a month. Your total out of pocket on your house is two thousand a month, so total of three thousand. Well, your actually, total income my payment using the Audi, the ten thousand from that, my payment is eleven hundred dollars for the house, right? So it's eleven hundred. Okay. Right, one ninety at four percent is eleven. One ninety at six percent is thirteen. So my income is twenty two hundred, and then from the house, from Airbnb, the RBO, your own personal website, telling friends and family. Um, and then the payment was 11 to 13, which gives you about $1,000 left over. So you bought the house, no money down, right? Not your Getting okay. equity. Not, okay. You bought the house without your money down. I could trademark that. Whatever. You know OPM. what to do, right? My favorite kind of money, OPM. So you now have bought this house with no money out of pocket. And you bought the car with no money out of pocket. So you have this... You have this car that will do 150 miles an hour. Not that you should do that, right? And you have a house. So you have a luxury vehicle and you have a house, piece of real estate, right? Or like the Rover, you know, one thing I always tell myself, don't have like, don't just have a landlord and have a Land Rover. You know what I'm saying? If you're going to have a Land Rover, have land, have somewhere to put it that belongs to you, which is why everybody should own a piece of land, be it real estate, a piece of land. If shit hits the fan and you own a piece of property, you can roll your RV up on it or <laughs> park the Range Rover. I slept in Joshua Tree in my Range Rover. I'm like, I am not driving back home an hour and a half. I'm just sitting here, get a glass of wine, stare at the moon, the stars, and especially when it's warm. I just roll the windows up in case the coyotes show up. You know what I'm saying? In the news, Nagrito found dead in the desert. No. <laughs> it was El Chapo. No. What was, so 
So yeah, so from the house you have so a thousand your, dollars. So right your now. your net, what you're bringing home after all this is over eleven hundred dollars a month. Correct, and you have a car that three weeks of the month you have to yourself. You can drive. That's completely yours to drive, and you have a piece of property that you can stay in. Because like for Airbnb, if your house is rented ten to fifteen times a month, that's considered well. A well-run Airbnb, especially in peak season, will be booked 70% of the time. Mm. So, you know, Texas, if you happen to have, I'd be smart enough and wise enough and to have help, you know, because my girlfriend helped me. But if you're the type of person that could have a house on the lake that people can rent for two to $700 a night so they can fish, they can jump in the boat, they can go jet skiing and all that stuff, and it's rented 20 times a night and an average of 500 bucks, I mean, and the mortgage is, you know, $1,000, 2000 bucks. Yeah. That's how people create residual income. So once freedom I... Freedom of time. Freedom, freedom of, time. of time. And I think worse came to worse, I could go oh. live in Texas. Marie! Marie Sorry! Marie, we're making vegan pizza. Oh, I know. I feel bad, Marie. I, actually, I tried to do this without Marie. That's okay. We Marie, made... we had the Wagyu beef with the goat cheese, the bread pudding where you were here. That was a good stuff. Tonight we're having vegan pizza. Oh, you reminded me. I'm... <laughs> Shit, you know, we need to cook this. I took this Wagyu Ooh, beef out Wagyu like beef. three days ago. Thanks, All right. Marie. We're making, um, tonight we're making, Thank um, you, Marie. we're going to do something. We'll cut it up and put it on like two picks. I'll go, I'll call some of my friends. Hey, guess what we're doing right now? I totally, thanks, Marie, for, I totally forgot about that. Cauliflower um, crust pizza. Yes. Oh, yeah. And we have, how many more minutes before it's done? We have five more minutes. Oh, we have three more minutes. <laughs> so three minutes, and then I can put the garlic on. So to finish, to, to go into step number three, and then I'll, I'll come, I'll come around um, home base. So we, now that we use the car to buy the actual property, we own the property. We own the car and we bought the car and the property with no money out of our own pocket, right? So we have our beautiful sports car and we have our piece of real estate. Now, all I did to buy that car, the cars and the real estate was to build my credit at all costs. Somebody calls you, hey, can I borrow 500 bucks tonight? F to the no, hell no. Hell no. No is a complete sentence. You can actually buy that shirt from Verbal Herb. <laughs> it's a real shirt on my website. Or on his my, Instagram. My Instagram, you go to Verbal Herb and get one of like 10, 11 shirts, right? Now they'll get the shirt off his back, chubby naked is my favorite one, right? Peace of mind is the best interest rate, blah, blah, blah. So by doing that, what you end up with is a house and a car. Now let's move to the next step. So my real estate is done. My car is done. And for most people, those are two of the biggest purchases they will ever buy is a car yeah. and a house, right? So I build my credit. Natalie puts me on her credit cards. My parents, my uncles, my girlfriend, everybody puts me on their credit cards, right? That's what I did with my kids. Me and my son, we put our right, his, uh, siblings and my kids on credit cards. So now, the, you know, you have these 17, 19-year-old kids with 700 FICO scores, Right. So then I got to tell my son, Evan, yo, we're going to say you make this much, right? We're going to we need to run money through your bank statements. We need to get you ready. So now my son, Evan is 19. Now he turns 20. He has, let's say, you know, he, he, he's smart. You know, he's my kid. He's saving money. But let's say he didn't really have a lot of money down. And is it, isn't Evan going to Berkeley? I know. <laughs> he's so a little I, smart. And I didn't go to college at all. I went to college like, oh, that's cute. <laughs> we should have a you party over there. Right now. Oh, <laughs> I don't right now. I don't know where I don't know where Morgan is going. I'm trying to get her to UCLA, but I want to stay close Morgan. so I can sneak up on her and show up. So I've been known to ask Rick, I've been known to show up on the cat once in a while. Oh, I believe it. So, but so build my credit, go buy a car. The car is nine thousand. The bank gives me twenty. I buy the nine and I put the eleven to ten thousand dollars on a two hundred thousand dollar house. Boom, I got both of my, that's out of the way. Now, here's something else that I like to talk about, right? And then again, make sure the house is near a national park, forest, it's somewhere people want to go. Like, so you got to be strategic. Right, where we are now, so I've had four or 500 people stay in this house with Airbnb. That's how um, I got my start, was through Airbnb, was doing the house first. So I had two extra bedrooms and I rented them out. And that's how I got the experience, dealing with people, all this stuff, blah, 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 blah. 
right? So now let's go through the last phase. And I think this is where people really, 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 I think they, they, they lose track of, you know, because now let's say instead of buying that Audi, but instead of buying uh, a new Alexa, stop. So now let's say I could have bought a 2022 Audi. Because what most people do is they go out and they buy the newer car or the new car. So they skip the leverage. They skip buying the property. They skip having the car paid for. They just go buy the car. And they're sitting in their driveway. So yeah, yeah, this is it. yeah that like pizza is done. Let's bring it out. Oh, baby. Yeah. Let's see. All right. Right. <laughs> Pow! I'm just kidding. Let's see what you got. So that. There you go. Check that out, Marie. Bam. Actually, Walter, that looks great. But I got skills, huh? Yeah. I've had people tell me I can't cook. I love a veggie pizza. Right? And I'm not a veg. I'm not a vegetarian fan. Matter of fact, wow. I wasn't that wagyu only takes four minutes. You know what I'm saying? Work it up. <laughs> Just in time for the pizza to get warm, uh, settled enough to slice. Right. So now the garlic has been out for 15 minutes. You let garlic sit for 15 minutes. So the Allison comes out and that's the chemical that fights disease and illness. Interesting. Yep. Garlic is, is man, you can learn a lot I from noticed, Mediterranean diet. I noticed that Sean had put on your um, Instagram, there's a lot of sodium in tomatoes as well. There is. Besides the lectin, yeah. Yep. But hey, if you can't beat them, join them. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I'd rather have sodium. Well, I guess it depends on if you have to watch your salt. Right? No, but that is true. Salt you have to be careful of because sodium helps you keep helps you gain weight. There's a lot to it, right? So you do have you do have to be careful, right? So now there's garlic. Was that your bam, Walter? Oh yeah, no, not bam. Ta da! That's it, right? I know. <laughs> so that is done. It's got tomatoes. The, the tomatoes are cooked, so the absorption of the lycopenes be higher. Mozzarella cheese, bell pepper, sage, right? Capers, we oh, there's a lot of stuff on this pizza. Garlic, you have the cows we can throw on. Um, and these are done. I'm gonna give them a second, then we'll cut them. And then what I'll do is I'll finish my story. So I'll clean up for you later. Let's say now you, you the average person wants to go out and buy a newer Audi. So let's say they buy a 2022 Audi and they spend forty thousand versus I spent. Forget that I bought a house and I'm making a thousand dollars a month and I get to keep the car in the house for myself most of the time. Forget all that. Buying the car at eleven thousand, at twenty thousand dollars, at ten percent interest rate over a six-year period. Because when you buy a car, you should stretch the loan out as far as possible. You can go if, all the way at what out to seven years? Is that what it is? Yes. Which which part? Should uh -huh. I say again? Um, oh, I think Marie wanted the concept again because that was a few minutes ago that she was asking. I think you hit it, but okay. So. Now, what happens is my car payment on my $20,000 Audi at 10% is 370 versus my neighbor that bought one for $40,000, he's paying $740,000. That is a $370,000 difference. Wow. So I have, I'm saving three seventy dollars plus the thousand I make from my Airbnb, the money I make from Turo, and I have a house and a luxury car. I have all those things with no money out of my pocket. This guy goes in, puts a down payment on a car. $40,000, he will drive it off the lot. In six months, that car will be worth $30,000. And it is working its way down to my value, right? And my car is 11 years older. Plus, I'm in an S5, I'll get them, right? All day long. <laughs> it's a wrap. So, but that $370 a month, let's assume you save that. And I believe that use 8% interest, if I'm correct. And one year, that is $4,600. In five years, that 370 the difference is $27,000. Here's what I want to ask you. How many people right now, I know most people don't because this is, California is expensive as hell. How many people have $27,000 that they can get their hands on, right? 10 years, 370 at 8%. And if I, I, I apologize if that's not eight, 68,000 in 20 years, just using the 370 from my car is 219,000. In 30 years, right? So let's say we started right now, right? Let's say we were both 46. We didn't have a pop to piss in, a jingle to shake, right? In 30 years, we would be 76. We'd have $555,000.
just from the car. Forget the Airbnb, the Turo, the saving money, the investments, taking the difference, making our own food, which means we're not paying tax. Because when you buy food in a the store, there's no tax. When you buy food in a the restaurant, okay. there's tax. And we don't have to tip tip your servers. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying, but if you, I mean, go out to eat sometimes. We got to support our servers, but you got to support yourself too. So if we, by not eating out, we save 8 to 10% tax and we save 15% and the tip, that is 25% plus on an inflated product. You go to a restaurant. So inflated. Yeah, this bottle of wine, which we got from St. Emilia in Bordeaux, is, it wasn't much. It was like 15, 20 bucks or it euros. It's like $40. Right, in a restaurant all day, this is 50, 60 bucks. Yeah. So I was from France. It's going to be more. It's like, psh, you can ship those FedEx. Okay, actually, that adds money to it, too. I didn't think about that part. Right? So when you had a couple glasses of wine, this 40 bucks easily. This, and let's say we were in a, a restaurant somewhere, right? These pizzas are easily $15 each. Oh, yeah. So there's 30, there's 75 bucks. With tax and tip, we're at $100. To do what didn't cost me 10 bucks, which is crazy. So now that 90 bucks we can take, and if we say this once a month we eat home versus eating out, that $90 a month over a 30 year period at 12% is $300,000. Wow. I don't know why my brain works that way. Mr. Huber calculator. No, so that's $300,000 just once a month. So we're 46 and we don't have a pot to piss in. We're 76, which is, you know, we can still, when I'm 70, it's going to be. It's going to be, I'm still going to have my moves. But how many people at 76 years old have a half a million dollars saved? Not very many. Very few. Can you imagine if everybody in their 70s had a half a million dollars net worth and saved? Grandma, grandpa, great auntie, auntie, uncle, all that stuff. Can you imagine what the world would be like? It would be mind blowing. So anyways, that is sort of the last step of just using the Audi. Now, obviously with the Range Rover, you have, you know, now you're looking at, a thousand versus two, three thousand dollars a month. You know, a Range Rover payment easily is two thousand dollars a month all day. At least for a Range Rover, it's two thousand yeah. dollars. You can buy same car supercharger, 150 miles an hour on the way to Phoenix or Joshua Tree, 150, 30 grand. And still with that number, using the Range Rover, you have a million dollars saved. So there's no reason to be broke in this country, especially with YouTube and as the money talks, right? And these fabulous pizzas. So I'm done. I'm gonna wrap. We are at an hour. Hallelujah. We are at an hour okay, and two gotta minutes. Do like the, I feel like there needs to be like a cutting of the pizza, oh. a little toast, and then you know I give my review at the end. Oh yeah. Let's see. <laughs> review my ass. This is good. Which one? Okay. Let's get to the real one. I'm saying the real one. Like I just <laughs> talked about plant based and how good it was, and I'm like, let's have the real pizza. So really, what I love so much about um, Marie <laughs> Walter's Pizza Hut. Really, what I love so much about as the many talks and what we talked about today, Walter, is really just helping people, helping us understand assets, right? right. Looking at money differently as leverage, as a tool. Um, and there's just so many different ways to make money. That's the thing. I think that we people get so caught up in, I don't know how to make money or blah, 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 whatever. But that's not true. Making money is easy. Is easy. We just need to you know, know how to get better at leveraging it. So... We can have control of our time if that's what we want. You Personally, need to I'm know. Be in control of our time. You need to know what to do with money. If you go out and make money and you don't save it, you are wasting your time because somewhere there's a homeless guy or somebody that is not doing living the way you are. But sooner or later, we'll catch you if you don't save. So every dollar you make, and it took me years to get into this financial behavior, is every time I make money, my first thought is where is this money going? Am I going to have a relationship with this dollar? 10, yes. 15, 20 years from now? Yes. Or am I just hitting and equity to it and booty to the money? You know what I'm saying? My money was a one night stand. You know what I'm saying? Sneak out the back. My wife is on or whatever. You know what I'm saying? Like, stop treating your money like a side chick. Ooh. You know, treat your money like your wife. Seriously. Because it is a relationship. And that's the one of the things that I've learned is the better that I've got with respecting money, with respecting stuff. Um, it's just been better for me as a whole, and so much more opportunity has showed up for me oh in that way too, right? Where you know, Heck people yes. laugh at me like Natalie always wins stuff, Natalie gets all this free stuff all the time. But I believe part of it is because of how much I respect my relationship yeah. with money, which wasn't always, obviously. No, we, right? we struggle with it, but like you need to have, did you see Tommy over there? Uh, oh, so, oh, yeah, what up, T? My Range Rover payment is very reasonable, but I put 20k down. 
See what I'm saying? That's a house, Tommy. But his his next one, we're gonna do it right. He, <laughs> but he need a new car. Driving to the Raiders fans, and he need to lean back and cry off half the games, and so he need a new car to to be comfortable in on that long ass drive back. And that, and actually, the Raiders game was actually pretty good. I give it up to the Raiders. That last second victory was off the hook. I was I I was excited for that. So, but yeah. These pizzas are done. We made them at home. Uh, you said you wanted to taste them. I don't remember which one had the mozzarella cheese and which one had the... That's the vegan and that's the mozzarella. The reason I can tell is because you put the turmeric. That one has the turmeric. Okay, so it. you remember that. Okay, so which one would you like? Um, well, I'm going to try it. I'm going to try it. No, I know. We're not going to sit here like <laughs> yeah. eat in front I'm of like, you guys. I'm like, I'm going to be real, Walter. I'm trying both kinds. But no, they're actually are good. If you're going to buy cheese, buy it raw. So what I do and what I'll do in the future is cheese that I buy... I will have shipped from Europe. If that's, I don't know how legal that is. I brought quite a bit of it from when we went to France. I bought quite a bit of it. I don't know how legal that was. Do you have anything to declare? I declare war. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> but no. Hey, wait. Salute. Salute. All right. Is, let's see. Let's see. Is Walter that good of a cook? Let me find out. I'm telling you. I have skills. Mmm. Wow. I not Marie, right. try with the nutritional yeast. This is great, by the Where way. Where were you an hour ago? Good tip. We could still put it on. This is fabulous. It's funny. Three hours. Yeah. You say that. I have nutritional yeast. But is it too late to put it on? No, you just, you just shake it on the top. Give me a little shake. Really? This is fabulous, Walter. Really? Mm -hmm. Okay. Nutritional yeast. Actually, a YouTube video I watched Ooh. yesterday said to take eat this every day. For, to fight illness. I thought, well, that was weird. Okay. Nutritional yeast. Let's see. Oh, never mind. <laughs> I'm going I'm to leave that alone. But I am going to try the yeast. <laughs> oh, wow. It is better. We should have just put yeast on it. This is delicious. Right? Do Anyways. Not. All right, you guys. If you have any questions, you can go to As A Money Talk. We are on YouTube, Spotify. Apple Podcast. I give mean, it a like and share. <laughs> give, please. give Walter a like and share. Tell somebody Let's... so we could get past 12 views. No. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no. Well, at least this week it's live. Last week it was private. Nobody could even see yes. it. Yes. Sorry, Marie. But so, yeah. That's just a good ex a reason for Marie to come back and make some more wild goofy. I'm not going to be mad at her. If you have my address, I have a whole pizza left if you want to come over and have some because I cannot eat all of I'm this. I'm going to eat it. Natalie will eat it. Okay, never mind. You can still come over. We'll save you a bite. Some of you guys have been to my house before. All right, you guys. Peace out. Thanks for getting have with us. Have a great week, everybody. Yes. Bye bye. Bye. Peace. Oh my God, that is amazing. That worked out.